8 o'clock, we're talking serious issues that are of great concern, something that we do not necessarily uh, you know, take notice of our eyes. Now, research done by the World Glaucoma Association found that the disease affects 67 million people worldwide, causing irreversible loss of vision if left untreated. Patients can lose up to 40% of their vision before realizing they have glaucoma. Now, World Glaucoma Week aims to teach individuals about the infection and how to protect your sight before it is too late. Now, uh, for more on this topic and other issues, we joined by Professor Grant McLaren and a glaucoma patient, Candace Buerta. Good morning to both of you and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Good morning. Now, Prof, let us start with you. What is this glaucoma and what causes it? Well, it's a, a chronic progressive um, optic neuropathy. It's, I saw on your, or your note there, it's an infection. It's not an infection. It's just a condition where the nerves are damaged by a number of factors, a number of own, unknown factors, but probably circulation and pressure. They damage the nerves. And because of the subtle and slow and chronic nature, it's often not notice, noticed by the patient until they have advanced disease. You can lose up to, as I said, 40% of your nerve fibers before you can even pick it up on a test. So the, the crucial thing is for people to be aware of it and the health, uh, you know, health workers or the caregivers should be looking at your nerve. That's the crucial thing because that's where you see the change early on. And if you know what to look for, you will see the damage happening early and that's the time to measure the pressure and then to do visual fields or structural assessment where we actually measure the thickness of the nerve and compare it to the normal population and that's how we diagnose it. Mm. The sad thing is that in this country and in many countries around the world, the people are unaware of it and most people suffering with glaucoma are undiagnosed. Probably 70 to 80 in this country. In, America, they say conservatively 50% of the people with it aren't diagnosed yet. Mm -hmm. I was about to say that's the saddest part of it that, you know, you, there are no symptoms if one can, can see. So you're not going to get any uh, severe pains or severe headaches or eye aches or, or things like mm -hmm. that. No, not in this form of the disease, the open angle one. The angle closure, they, half of them present with acute attacks and that's painful. They get nausea. But that's the minority of these patients and they in our country we a minority of our patients a small minority actually have the closure variety now can this, uh, what kind of glaucoma were you diagnosed with and when was that um it was open angle i was diagnosed last year around july yeah, last year july yeah ju last year july is it and how, how how did it come about did you necessarily just went to see an optometrist or were you you know suspicious of certain things not really. Um, I needed to get my driver's license. So obviously beforehand, you need to, they do an eye test and where they actually inform you whether you need to go to optometry so that they can give you a clear um, letter so that you can actually do the driver's license. And that's how um, I became diagnosed. Now, Prof, it can only be controlled up to a certain level. Kindly take us through what, what does she take, uh, particular medicines or... Yeah. In Candace's case, she had high pressure when she came in, especially in the eye that had suffered the most damage. So we've now put her on a treatment to lower the pressure, and we've done so successfully. We're about to check her pressures again today, and we've succeeded in that. And I'm not sure now, because I haven't seen your notes recently, but you had laser. Did we do laser on you? Yes, we did. Yeah. we did. And so that helps also bring the pressure down. That improves the function of the angle where the fluid, eye fluid is drained through. And that's where there's a problem, an obstructive, the outlet is blocked. Mm -hmm. And so we've managed to improve her. So her, we brought her pressures down to normal level, and that will dr dramatically slow the progress of the disease. And the crucial thing is to keep her better eye from progressing rapidly. And the pressure in her case was the risk factor for glaucoma progression. So we've controlled that risk factor. And we're hopeful that we're going to now put on a, on a different sort but of path. But it's not irreversible. It's That's not the point. irreversible. That's the whole sad thing about it. What you've lost, you've it's lost. Gone. You can't regain that. Now, Candice, do you, are you on classes now? Um, yes, I am wearing classes. But I, I think with the assistance of my right eye, I can actually function normally. Mm -hmm. yeah. How has it change, uh, changed your lifestyle? Um, drastically. I, I can't drive at night because the vision is impaired. Um, most of the time I'll need reading glasses, but other than that, it's been all right. 
thus far? Now, in conclusion, Prof, your message mm. to people, I, we, we hardly go for an eye test. We only mm. go there when we go for our driving uh, licenses or when we go maybe for our classes. What is your message to people out there? My message to people is, one, if you've got a family history of glaucoma, you, need to, you and your siblings need to be examined. Even relatives you know, need to be examined. And the crucial thing is it's not only about pressure measurement. Once you have age is a factor, race is a factor, but you must ask your healthcare worker, the, the one who's looking at you, look at my nerve. What is my nerve? How does it compare with the other side? Is there any damage? Mm -hmm. That's how we diagnose it early. We have a heightened in index of sort of suspicion and, and look at the nerve. And once we've looked at the nerve well and know how to look at it, We'll diagnose these cases earlier. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there, but thank you very much uh, to both of you. Uh, Professor Grant McLaren, he is a doctor at St. John Eye Hospital at Baragwanath Hospital, and Candice and Julie both, I uh, thank you very much uh, once again. Now, it's exactly 10 minutes before 8 o'clock. We're quickly going on, on a break.